Thank you. Sarah, it's a pleasure to be here. I do make it a policy in life never to follow Charles Krauthammer. I find that that serves me well. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be with uh, some of Israel's most stalwart friends. Um, I came just now from a rally that we had outside the embassy, uh, and that's why I'm wearing this yellow ribbon. Turns out that the person who sang the song, Tie That Yellow Ribbon, Tony Orlando, was in Israel a couple of days ago, um, and uh, he wanted to reach out uh, to the families of those who were kidnapped. We put him in touch with the mother of uh, Naftali, who was of dual citizenship, and he went and visited her uh, and expressed his hope that uh, people throughout the United States would place three yellow ribbons on a tree outside their home in solidarity with the people of Israel uh, with a clear demand to bring our boys home. So I hope everybody here <laughs> will do that. And you know that uh, President Abbas has made this or that comment about what happened. It was a little late, and it was always, he always finds a way to condemn acts on both sides. It's a very bizarre thing. It's almost as if after 9-11 somebody would say, well, we condemn the killing of Americans and the, the killing of, of Afghans a day after, because you'll notice that when they condemn it, it's never a full-throated condemnation. But I'll tell you something. I'll explain to you why I don't think it's a full-throated condemnation. Because you can't say that you were against these acts when you forged an alliance with the terror organization that is celebrating these acts and perpetrating these acts. So the best thing that you can do, that President Abbas can do, is break his alliance with Hamas. It's very simple. If he doesn't do it, then he's just not serious. And so I hope he will. Now, I'm honored to be here tonight, uh, not only to really to pay homage to the person who I think is Israel's greatest defender, and he's been Israel's greatest defender uh, for decades, Charles uh, Krauthammer. And Israel has been blessed over the years with a few people who have really stood out. We've had many friends in this town, many political leaders, many people uh, like A.M. Rosenthal and William Sapphire who wrote for prominent newspapers. There has never been a greater defender of Israel than Charles Krauthammer, and I'm honored to be here tonight with you. And I think all of you have a very difficult challenge because your challenge is to stand up for the truth. And that's become harder and harder each year. Because in standing up for the truth, you're standing against very powerful, very powerful currents. You know, the founders of modern Zionism uh, were actually part of an elite movement. They were ahead of their time. This was before Woodrow Wilson, the Spring of Nations, uh, and Churchill and Herzl's ideas um, were ahead of the curve. And to be a Zionist at that time, you were part of a small elite, but you felt that you were ahead of history. To be a Zionist today and to stand proudly for Israel, you were standing in the face of really, really strong headwinds. And that's why the challenge today is so much more difficult than it has been in the past. And I know it's difficult to stand for the truth in the face of so much opposition, so much political correctness. But in standing up for the truth, think about one of those early Zionists. It wasn't actually Herzl. It was Achad Am, who was born Asher Ginsburg, who was a learned yeshiva bacher, who became secular later in life, but he understood the traditions of his people in a way that few have. And he was sort of Herzl's foil. But he wrote an essay over a century ago, an essay in which he argued that the blood libel had done something very important for the Jewish people, that it was a wonderful thing for the Jewish people. Now, how can you possibly explain that? Think about how many people were killed, dispossessed, expelled from lands because of the blood libel. He said, no. 
The reason why it did something very important for the Jewish people is he said it's very hard for somebody to stand up and to speak the truth against so much opposition. You start questioning yourself. You start doubting yourself. And what the blood libel taught the Jewish people was something very interesting. Because in the Middle Ages, most people believed that the blood libel, this ancient lie that we had taken uh, Christian children and used their blood to bake matzahs, most people believed in the Middle Ages that this was true, including intellectuals. All the Jews knew it was false. So a Chadam writing 100 years ago said it taught the Jewish people that the whole world could believe something and that the whole world would be wrong. Now, fast forward 100 years after he wrote that essay, and I remember this as if it were yesterday. Israel launched, you may remember, a decade ago, a military operation called Operation Defensive Shield. And it came after one of the worst wave of terror attacks that we have ever had. Uh, and in fact, one of the worst months, March 2002, culminating in that massacre at a Passover Seder. You remember that? And then Israel decided, they had this funny concept in Israel, that the best way to actually fight terrorism was to fight it. I know, it's an interesting concept. So they launched Operation Defensive Shield, and they went into, back into these cities in Judea and Samaria, including Janine. And Janine was the single worst place where more suicide bombers emanated from that one place than any other place. And here you had Israeli soldiers, and we didn't do, by the way, what non-democratic countries do. You know the difference between non-democratic countries and democratic countries when they face these types of threats? The non-democratic countries just carpeted bomb from the air. The democratic countries, when faced with a threat this close to their homeland, will drop flyers and then bomb. Israel did neither. Israel sent its soldiers into this hornet's nest of Palestinian terrorism. Booby-trapped cars, things blowing up, Israeli soldiers going through those alleys in Janine, and Israeli soldiers died in that operation so that innocent Palestinians could live. Our soldiers died so that innocents could live. And when Israel went in there, Israel was accused of everything, of massacres. Some accused Israel of genocide, using words like that. Genocide in the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, 15,000 have been killed. Israeli-Palestinian conflict, 15,000 on both sides in almost a century of conflict. In May 1944, 10,000 people were killed every day in Auschwitz. But Israel is accused of genocide. We were accused of massacres. The chief negotiator of the Palestinians, a man named Saib Erekat, who only lies when he speaks. <laughs> he accused Israel of killing 500 people. Now, a UN commission at the time that was set up following this assault against Israel, and you know how much the UN is biased towards Israel, they f came up with a report, they did a study, and they found that 54 people were killed. On the Palestinian side, 51 of them armed. And about two dozen soldiers lost their life in that operation. And here Israel was accused of all these wild allegations. And I remember as if it were yesterday, the then Secretary General of the United Nations that walked out of the UN building to a podium with about 50 mics around him. And Kofi Annan, I have to be diplomatic here, let's just say his legacy at the United Nations will not be moral clarity. <laughs> he went out to these mics, and this is what he said, and I was watching this on the television sitting in Jerusalem. He said, as all of these allegations of massacres, of thousands of people dead in Janine, about all the evil that e Israel was perpetrating, he walked to those microphones and he said this. And I asked the people of Israel, can the whole world be wrong? 
And as Ahad Am said 100 years earlier, the answer is yes. The whole world can be wrong. And the challenge of this organization, and the reason why it was so important for me to come here tonight, is because you stand up and you say the whole world is wrong. And in doing so, you do a great service to the Jewish people and to the one and only Jewish state. And I applaud you for standing strong, standing firm, and always, always defending the truth. Thank you very much.